Hello, my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and you're about to watch part two of this two-part mini-series on flue flow test and spillage. This is designed for trainee gas engineers and if this is the first video you're watching, you need to go back to video one where we've done flue flow testing. This is part two on spillage test. So, let's get on with it. Now, before I can do the spillage test, I need to get the gas reconnected and I need to get the new radiants in. Now, first video I talked about tightness test. I'm going to connect the gas up, I'm going to do a tightness test, then I'm going to purge at the connection. Okay, once I've got that done, I'm going to get the radiants in, then I'm going to get this fire up and running. Let's get on with that now. Okay, so what you've just seen me do is, first of all, I reconnected the gas underneath. I opened the isolation valve here. I then went and did my tightness test. Do you remember the uh, um, conversation we had before about tightness tests? After a successful tightness test, you must always purge. So you saw me purge. I did a picture of the meter with the first uh, index reading, then I purged the minimum volume and then took the picture of the second index reading. So, because this is a G4 meter and the pipe work is less than 28 mil, we can purge to five times the badge capacity. So, the reason why it's five times the badge capacity is because there's, five cham uh, there's four chambers in the meter and one for the pipe work. Now, the volume of that meter is two decimeters cubed. Two decimeters cubed times five is 10 decimeters cubed, which is equivalent to 0.01 meters cubed, and that's what I passed as a minimum. Now, you've just seen me put the radiance back, and you've just seen me light it, and it virtually lit instantly. There is no high-pitched squeal, so we know we've purged properly. I followed the purge procedure, opened all the windows and doors. So remember, this is a training centre. If there was a customer, I would have told them they could smell gas, uh, don't um, turn anything electrical on and off, no smoking, no naked flames. If there's a doorbell, take the doorbell up if it's connected to the mains. So these are all the things we should be talking to our customers about. So this appliance is now ready to get up and running. Okay. Now, let's have a look at BS5440 and see what it says about the spillage procedure. And we'll also have a look at the manufacturer's instructions. So let's have a look at that now. 
So this is what BS5440 part one says about checks the appliance for a spillage test. So on satisfactory completion of the test in 6322, the chimney with the appliance connected shall be checked as follows. New or used appliances shall not be installed unless the appliance manufacturer's instructions are available to the installer. Remember that. Where the appliance manufacturer's instructions are not available, the appliance manufacturer shall be consulted. So if it's in a room, close all the windows and doors, close any adjustable vents, switch off any mechanical ventilation supply in the room, other than that provides combustion air for the appliance. Operate any fans and open any passive stack ventilation. Now then, normally what we would do is we would do a spillage test without any fans operating with the passive stack open. Okay, the first thing which is slightly different to what we've got here. Now these fans could be on in adjacent rooms or the same room. So if you've got a paddle fan in the room or an extractor fan in the room, then they need to be operated. Now it does say operate them on maximum setting, but if they are paddle fans, it's always advisable, according to the manufacturers, to operate them in all speeds. Now the fans could also be in kitchens and bathrooms. We could also have cooker hood extractors in, ki in kitchens. We could also have tumble dyers direct to outside. And we could have um, air conditioning units in conservatories. So you've got to check. And these would only need to be in adjacent rooms. So these would be checked after the initial um, spillage test with the windows and doors closed. With these doors open to the adjacent room and the fans in operation. The appliance in operation at its set input settings, check that the appliance clears its products of combustion using the method described in the appliance manufacturer's instructions. If spillage is detected, switch off the appliance, disconnect and rectify the fault. It says close any passive stack ventilation and repeat the test. If spillage is detected, switch off the appliance, disconnect and rectify the fault. Now, if um, a fire spills with no fans running, you cannot add ventilation to overcome this problem. You need to sort out the problem. But if it passes without the fans running, but fails with the fans running, then you can put extra ventilation in there to overcome the fan because it could be the fan causing the problem. But remember, if it fails without fans running, you're trying to find the problem, not ramming a load of ventilation in to, um, to overcome this problem. You need to find out what it is. So let's look at the next part. So with the appliance in operation, carry out the flow visualization check by applying the smoke producing device, e.g. a smoke match, puffer or josh stick to the edge of the draft diverter or gas fire canopy within five minutes of lighting the appliance. Apart from an occasional wisp, mm, that's what we need to look at, which may be uh, discounted all the smoke shall be drawn into the chimney and evacuated to the outside air. So, close any passive stack ventilation and repeat the test. If spillage occurs, leave the appliance operating for a further 10 minutes and recheck. If spillage still occurs, switch off, disconnect the appliance and rectify the fault. If there are any fans elsewhere in the building, the test shall be repeated with the internal doors open, all windows, external doors and um, adjustable vents closed and all fans in operation. So that's what the regulation BS uh, 5440 part one says. So let's put it into practice. Okay, now this fire has been running for about five minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light the smoke match drop it into the tube and the manufacturer's instruction says slide it under the canopy. So that's what we're going to do. Let's light this flow lamp first. So this is the manufacturer's instructions. You can see and the actual fire at the fire. So it gives us our spillage test procedure. It says light the fire and leave at full rate. Close all doors and windows. After five minutes, insert a smoke match as shown in the diagram. Smoke will be drawn into the fire if installation is satisfactory. If spillage is evident, leave the fire for a further 10 minutes. If spillage is still evident, disconnect the fire. So, it doesn't mention anything about whiffs of smoke. It says if, it's, uh, if it fails, it's disconnected. 
It also gives us other information such as the year of manufacture, 2004. Okay, it also gives us our heat input, 6.4 kilowatts gross. It also gives us our burner pressure, 17 millibars plus or minus 1 millibar. It also gives us our serial number, name of the fire and the GC number. If you don't know what the GC number, the GC stands for gas council number. So every, every gas appliance is given a GC number. Okay. Mm, technically, they are given GC numbers now, but the older appliances, if they were under 7 kilowatts, a lot of the time they didn't get a GC number. So the GC number is a gas council number made by British Gas. So that's what the data badge looks like. Manufacturer's instructions tells us pretty much the same. And this is what we follow, not the British standards. Remember, manufacturer's instructions don't override the British standards, but they do get um, permission to give other out different information on how to check their appliance. So that's what the manufacturer says about the spillage test for this fire. So you could see there, it was spilling like a good one. So we need to leave it on for another 10 minutes it says, and let's see what happens. Okay, the appliance has been running for a further 10 minutes. Now let's try it again. Ooh, it's spilling worse now than it was before. Okay. I don't think any of it went up the chimney. Send it off to see where I am. Okay, so it's failed its spillage test. Now I know this fire has flu problems. Passes the flu flow test okay. Fails the spillage test. Because it has 90 degree bends. It terminates outside the building, straight out, doesn't go up, doesn't terminate 1.5 meters off the roof or 600 above the ridge. Um, and it, it's completely wrong, it's not three meters high, it's got a hole in it. It's a trading center, it's failed miserably. So let me show you on one of the other fires downstairs, an actual spillage test passing. Let's have a look at that now. Okay, so that's pretty much a spillage test. So let's just recap. Okay, so first of all, close all windows and doors. Yeah? Any fans, turn them off. Any vents, what can be closed, close them. Any passive stack systems, you leave them open. Okay? You then carry out your spillage test. If it passes its spillage test to where the manufacturer's instructions tells you to and there are any fans in that room, then you need to now operate the fans. If there are any passive stacks, we now need to close them. Okay. Also, if there are any fans in adjacent room, we need to operate them. Now, adjacent room means you're only going through one door to get to that room. You're not going through two doors. So if it's in a living room and there's a kitchen right off the, the living room and there's a door there, you have that door open. If there's any extractor fans, like we said, cooker hoods or um, tumble dryers. If there's a conservatory off that room, so you go in out of the living room straight into the conservatory and there's an AC unit, an air conditioning unit, then you have that door open and the AC unit. And you have them all running at maximum, so you do the worst case scenario. If you're open plan downstairs and above the top of the stairs, the bathroom is there with an extractor fan. You will open uh, the door and turn that extractor fan on. So you would go around the house and make sure all these uh, fans would be on and then do your spillage test. Now again, like I said, if it fails, with the fans running, we can look at putting extra ventilation in to overcome that. 
But if it fails without the fans running, we need to investigate, not just put an air brick in, because the flue might be still blocked, okay? There might be something wrong with the spigot on the fire. There could be loads of things. It's not just the point of putting ventilation in. We need to investigate that. But if we prove it's passing and anything on the external source is causing it to spill, then we can open a window, buy a centimetre, measure the area, see if it spills. If it does spill, open it a little bit more. And then you can get your centimetre squared. Like I say, some training manuals say 35 centimetre squared, some say 50 centimetre squared. It, it's the best way of finding out, I think, is opening a window bit by bit until you get enough air in for it to, to pass a spillage. Okay. So, let's have a look at different appliances where we would do the spillage test and the flue flow test. So let's have a look at those now. So this is an inset live fuel effect fire, commonly known in the trade as a live fire. So according to the manufacturer's instructions, we would do a spillage test here, under here. So we would use our smoke batch in our holder and we would put it underneath there and run it under there. If we were going to do a um, flue flow test, this fire has to come out. You can't just throw a bomb in the back of it because you need to cat you need to check the catchment space. So when you're doing a flue flow test, the fire is coming out. Spillage test, the fire needs to be in and running. Okay, so that's the inset live fuel effect fire. Make sure you read the manufacturer's instructions. So this is the data badge and the manufacturer's instructions of this inset live fuel effect fire. So to carry out the spillage test, it says close all windows and doors, light the fire and turn it on high setting. After five minutes, insert a smoke match 10 millimeters below the top of the opening and point upwards at 45 degrees. The installation is satisfactory if all the smoke is drawn into the chimney. If in doubt, um, repeat after a further 10 minutes for further details, please refer to the installation instructions. And again, that gives us all the other details. So remember, this one says, all the smoke. Okay. Let's have a look at something else. Now this is a BB unit, back boiler unit. The fire connects onto the front of here, so it will be in the way here. The spigot will be going through here. So we need to do a flue flow test without the fire connected. So we would do our flu flow test on here. This is a draft diverter. So we would be above the draft diverter to do our flu flow test, okay? Our spillage test would be done about here. We would do a spillage test with the boiler running. We would do a spillage test with the fire running. And then we would do a spillage test with both of them running. So that's how you would do flu flow test and spillage on a BBU. Let's have a look at some else. Okay, this is an open fluid boiler. This is the draft diverter here. Okay, so this is the back of the boiler. So this is the draft diverter. So what we would do here, this is where we would do our flu flow test and spillage. Again, we would warm the flue up and then do our flu flow test with the appliance turned off and it would be just inside here, about 25 mil down, 25 mil in. And uh, check with the mats first and then use a bomb to make sure it's pulling for the flu flow. We would then do a spillage test with the appliance running and again we would use our smoke holder and again 25 mil down, 25 mil in and we would do the spillage test. So that would be the spillage test on an open flued floor standing, boiler, to the manufacturer's instructions. Now, the next test we're going to do is a little known, not very well understood by gas engineers, test called a sweep test. Now, a sweep test is has been designed to check an appliance to make sure no products of combustion are coming into the room when you've finished all your servicing. So, every gas appliance should have a sweep test done on it. Um, now I'm going to do a video in the future on all using anal analyzers and how to do this test but I might as well show you this test now while we've got the fire ready for going. So we know this fire is spilling. Now the sweep test, there's a special part on the analyzer for this sweep test. So I'm just going to get the analyzer up and running now. Okay, so uh, it's not vitiated in the area so um, we're now confirming and get it on. 
Now, this analyzer is a brand new pro from uh, Anton. So, but I'm going to go through this on, a, on another video, so watch out for that one coming out. Now, sweep test, while that's going through its, its purge piece, um, procedure. Okay, this sweep test. This sweep test is a two minute test. And what we're looking for is a measurement of CO. The CO has to be less, so the carbon monoxide has to be less than 10 parts per million for fluid appliances. So whether it's a boiler or a, a, a fire. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Um, now, as I say, it's a two minute test. We're gonna sweep around the appliance. I'm gonna show you how to do it. And that's why it's called the sweep test. So you will do this on, like I say, on, on any fluid appliance, any gas appliance. So, get the analyzer up and running and let's have a go. Okay, first big boo-boo. <laughs> Make sure your analyzer is charged before you do any tests. So we've had to revert to one of the old um, Anton analyzers, the Evo. This is uh, an Evo 3. Now you can see that still has a sweep test mode. So that's now in the mode. It's now purged. It's now sampling. But it won't start sampling and timing down until I press the, set, uh, the middle button. So I need to get this appliance up and running. Now this appliance is quite warm and it has been running for quite a while so and it is as you can tell by the way I'm dressed the actual hottest day of the year at the moment and I've got all the windows and doors shut so um, pardon my dress sense turn the appliance back on I'm now going to start the timer and I'm now going to sweep around the fire for two minutes so this will count down, well, count up two minutes for me. So, it's now started, and I'm now sweeping around the appliance, okay? So it's not just where the radiants are, it's the old vicinity of the fire. Making sure we're not getting any CO coming back into the room. Remember, this does spill products of combustion back in. I've been going a minute, and so far we've got two parts per million CO. But it's not actually reading anything at the moment, it's just picked up some CO before. So let's go around the top here, where the closure plate is. Remember, this appliance did fail our. Uh, spillage test quite badly it's getting hot it's getting very hot Okay, so that's our test, and as you can see, the test passed. Okay, now I'm just going to do a spillage test on here now just to see if it actually does pass its spillage test out because this is a couple of days since I filmed the first part of the video, and it is incredibly hot today. So I'm just going to see if it does pass the, the spillage test. No, it's failing miserably. Okay, as you can see, the smoke is coming in. Oh, I should say coming into the room, coming out of the fire. 
so that properly failed miserably. Okay. Now, I'm very lucky here because, well, not very lucky, there's a hole in the flue. But I am very lucky, I can now sample um, the actual flue and I'm going to see what CO this fire is actually producing in the flue. Okay? So let's have a look at that then. So, we can now see, I am trying to do two things with two, well, three things with two ends. The probe is in the flue, as you can see there. And we're now down to the screen, and you can see the screen is actually, <laughs> it's not actually producing any CO. So it's doing a CO2 of seven with no ratio, zero ratio. Yet our sweet test said we did pick up a little bit right at the very beginning but at the moment while it's sampling the flu it's not actually picking any CO out which is incredibly weird but there you go so at the moment this fire is giving us a CO of 0, a CO2 of 0 0.8 and a 0 ratio okay and I'm getting, my legs are getting very 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 hot now so I'm going to leave this on well, let's see what it comes up to because when you're flue gas analyzing it's a minimum of 15 minutes or a stable reading or a maximum of 30 minutes so we're going to leave it in for 15 minutes so what's the time now there you go so we'll say two o'clock i know it's it has been in for a little bit so we'll do it till to just after two and see what reading we get on the screen then but it's bloody hot in here now now you can see we just passed 2 o'clock, so it's been nearly 15 minutes. And we'll look at the screen. Oh my word, it's not changed. And it's just like an oven in here. So you can see this actually isn't producing any CO. So in this situation, the sweet, the sweet test hasn't really helped us. So let's have a bit of a sum up. Now let's sum up what we've been doing. So. We've done the flu flow test, we've done the spillage test. We've flu flow test, we've closed our windows and doors, we have um, turned any fans off, we have got nothing running whatsoever, we've informed the customer and all the procedure what we're going to do and then we've tested. So flu flow test is with no fans in. Then we've carried out the spillage test with everything off first and then we've turned everything on. And we've also done at the very end, we've done a sweep test. Now we only did the sweep test around the appliance. Now you technically should do a sweep test in the room as well, a metre away from the appliance. When we look at flueless space heaters and how to do flue gas analyzing on those, we'll look at we'll look at that then. So these are the tests as a gas engineer we should be carrying out when we're doing flue flow tests and spillage when we're servicing open fluid appliances. You've now just finished watching this gas tutorial on flue flow test and spillage. If you've enjoyed this video, why don't you give us a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, just get over there and subscribe and press that notification bell because every Wednesday we release new videos. So, hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you on the next one. Cheers.